Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for a hot topic. This one talks about the federal government to begin distribution of grains nationwide. And joining us to have a conversation is Shegun Shokwiton. He's the chairman, Accountability, Candle and Transparency Network. Good morning, Mr. Shokwiton. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Um, thanks for having me. Okay, so we're talking about the distribution of grains. Um, earlier, I'm suspecting the smile on your face. Are you expecting the grain I, to I am. Me? I, I, I hope it gets to me. <laughs> and I'm okay. sure maybe we were just asking if it has gotten to your doorstep by now. But, no, uh, I haven't gotten mine. Uh, you haven't gotten mine? I'm not going to give the answer I gave up here. <laughs> 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 well, we're hopeful. Fingers crossed that we're going to get. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I think President Tinubu had promised about 140 something thousand metric tons of grains, and now they're saying there's going to be a distribution of these grains. But we're wondering why we haven't seen it now. How many people are going to get there? There are so many questions to ask. So let's just get your thoughts on this first, then we can move forward. Well, look. Um the, what, 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 what these types of promises tell me is that um, the president doesn't understand the gravity of the situation that is confronting him. I don't think he gets it. Mm. And I don't think the people around him get it. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't make these types of um, rather, um, I want to choose my words carefully. Um, so I'll say rather unfortunate um, pronouncements. I could use much stronger words. Mm. Um, look, the, if we if we do if we break this number down, forty-two thousand metric tons of grains will be distributed. That's the word. Mm. Um, and then another fifty-eight thousand metric tons of rice mm. um, would also the set down will be shared will be sent to the markets for price stabilization. So I would assume that that will be sold. Right now, if you take the forty-two thousand that will be distributed, which means that it will be given out for free, I, I believe they, they claim they've done this, um, you know, about a month ago or thereabouts. I haven't seen it. I didn't see any evidence of it, so I don't know. That's why I said they claim. But mm -hmm. let's even assume that it happened. Forty-two thousand metric tons across thirty-six states and the FCT. Guess how much? How? how <laughs> I mean, that is one thousand metric tons mm. per state. Our annual consumption of rice alone, rice alone, <clears throat> per annum, 7 million metric tons. <laughs> you know, so if you if you take that annual consumption of rice and divide that, you know, you have 189, let's say 200,000 metric tons per state and the FCT is what we consume. Rice alone, not great. So we're not talking uh, millet, we're not talking wheat, we're not talking maize, you know, and all the other strategic grains that we, we consume uh, as a country. Just rice, 200,000 metric tons per state. And then the government says, oh, there's hardship in the land. So we want to um, ameliorate the situation. We will share us 2,000 metric tons, which is about 1,000 metric tons um, per, per state. You are talking less than... Um, 2% of yeah. the consumption, maybe even 1%, you know. So clearly, um, the politicians, the political class, are, they are trifling with this matter. They don't understand how grievous and how dangerous this situation is. You see, when people begin to take the laws into their own hands without caring and they're even recording, doing video recordings of themselves and saying that they are taking this because they are hungry, uh, then you realize that you are very, very close to the brink of civil disorder, of complete breakdown. Of, it's just a matter of time. We're not far away. And the danger in this is, uh, sadly, it won't only be the government's assets that will be attacked and targeted. You know, it will only be a matter of time before the poor, the have not, will train their eyes on the people they believe are members of the house and attack them and enter their houses their pantries and their kitchens to take food for themselves. It's just a matter of time. It will happen. Unless something drastic is done, we cannot be sharing for 2,000 metric tons of grains across the entire country and say that we're intervening in the situation. This is absolutely ridiculous. We, you know, so this government must do better. The president must show more sensitivity, more awareness. You know, he must show more 
there has to be there has to be a, a, a clear display of empathy you know for the people of the country that are suffering as a result of policies he has insisted on pursuing you know so so for me my my, my preliminary commentary is this is is, is tokenistic and it's almost I, I could almost say it's wicked you know it's like throwing grains to dogs who are mm. hungry you know it's a matter of time before they tear you down well, um, a ton, a ton of uh, rice is about eighteen bags because if a ton is about uh, uh, seven hundred, uh, nine hundred and seven kilograms, so Thank it's you. about eighteen bags that you will go in, into that. So for forty-two thousand, it will be seven hundred and sixty-two thousand bags How of rice for two hundred million Nigerians that it will be distributed. How many households do we have? I'm wondering what data will be used. You said something about. Uh, not being long before they enter into uh, looting other things. We've already heard that not only uh, was the rice and grains looted, they have also entered ha places where they sell uh, building materials and looted some of these things. Maybe the cement, maybe the, mm. the roofing sheets and all that. These things are being looted and we're not... For but this is where we are right now. The AFDB... Uh, president uh, Deshino has said monetary uh, moni the things they are doing now will not bring down the prices of goods and services. Obasanjo even proffered a solution that we're, we're looking at uh, inflation in the face and maybe we should go to Zimbabwe to make sure that we find out what they did because the inflation there was terrible and now they're trying to manage it and all that. We don't know what the solution is. Now, if the government is listening to you, what would be your first line of advice to them? What can be done? Because it's a ticking bomb. In this program, we've been talking about it, that we don't know what will happen tomorrow, and we may not be able to manage it when it comes. It mm -hmm. might be more than NSARS. So what do we begin to do beyond distributing rice to people that may not be the ones that are in need at all? Okay, so, so that, just, just to, to write on that last comment you made about this being more than answers, let, let, let's, let's paint a picture of how gory this can become. And I think it's important, I know that uh, people, you know, your station has a wide viewership, and I know some people that are connected to government or that are in government will listen to this. Um, do, do, we've had two examples of how, where we're headed. We had the answer situation, and we had the xenophobic attacks in South Africa situation and the reprisal that happened in Nigeria. During NSAS and during those xenophobic reprisal attacks in Nigeria, you know, people that were poor invaded private estates. Yes. And attacked private homes. People that believed they are poor took out their anger. You, you could see that this was just anger and uh, bad belief on the assets, the vehicles. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that video. That was a very popular video that trended of, um, um, you know, of um, Lekki Expressway and how some men, some guys, took wood, huge, you know, stems of wood and were breaking the glass of any SUV that was passing by. Mm. Uh, you know, people scaled over fences into Lekki Phase 1, Admiralty Way, and were attacking estates in that area. My own estate in order here, I, you know, order. By no means um, a high, high brow, it's a middle income um, uh, community. We're not, we're not multi millionaires, you know, and all of that here. We're just middle income people, middle class, getting by our lives. We were attacked. People jumped over our fences. I personally had to play vigilante role during that, the, the answers period, you know. That's how bad now, that was then. Compare the anger and the emotions in the land today to what it was then. You know, the, the hunger, the hardship that we have today to what it was then. Then you realize how bad things must be now in the hearts of the people. So that's to paint a scenario for, for the government people that are listening. We are just one, one small spark away from the, an explosion that will consume, God forbid, and may consume everybody. So what do we do? The first step, you see, sadly, the government did not listen to good advice. You remember on your show, 
I repeatedly spoke against the removal of subsidies. So I spoke. Oh, oh. <laughs> a lot of people spoke. You know, there are people in um, in the middle class elite uh, groupings, people who are like economically aware, economic experts, financial experts like myself. That's what I do. You know, as my profession, who are sold on the idea of subsidy removal and that subsidy is a problem, you have to float your currency. They're sold on IMF and World Bank ideologies, right? Now, you can see the outcome, because those ideologies will not work in a poor country. It will not work. And I kept saying this. Now, what do we do? We have unleashed Pandora's box. The demons are flying around, consuming people. We're trying to to bring them back and close the camp. It's almost impossible. So for me, the first thing that we need to do is to address it, address the things that we can address. What can we address today in Nigeria? Government spending, government optics. You see, people are hungry, but more critically, people are angry. So you have Nigerians who are looking around themselves and seeing how poor they are, how much hardship they are going through, how hard it is for them to feed their families on a daily basis. And then those same Nigerians, in this same Nigeria, see the motorcade, the convoy of the president of their country, who is responsible for their situation, driving a motorcade that has hundreds of cars, not just ordinary cars. Flashy cars that cost hundreds of millions. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that, you, you can't do that. You can't. You know, it doesn't matter because I'm not talking about the cost of governance now. I'm just saying that the government and especially the president must show that he is also affected by the hardship created by his own policies. You cannot create policies that are, that are throwing people into poverty, abject poverty, talking about existential poverty. And you are just going about your life normally. As we speak now, he's in Qatar. And he has gone with his two children. And they were a part of the lineup. You know, when you travel, you know, and then you are being received, the official mm -hmm. delegation is being received by the host country, and then you line up the, the members of your delegation. His sons were on that on that lineup. Two of his sons. And they don't have any role to play in government officially. This is the kind of uh, optics that is being pushed out by the president. And then his handlers come out and they lie to us every day. The president must address the anger in the land before you now come and talk about addressing the hunger in the land. You see, the hunger in the land, it will take time. We have unleashed it. It's almost impossible. You can't, I mean, how do you want to restore subsidy? It will take tremendous amounts of willpower for the president to come back now and say, oh, I made a mistake. We're wrong. We're, we're, we're going back to subsidy. It's not impossible. We have the financial resources, by the way. It's not like, so I don't agree by any stretch of the imagination with anybody that says that oh, the country was going to collapse if we didn't remove subsidy, our fiscal structure was imbalanced, blah, blah, blah. It's all absolute nonsense. I tell you that for free. This ideology and these ideas are being sold to us by a political class that have their own agenda. The agenda is not the development of Nigeria, but that's a discussion for another day. Right now, what needs to happen is that the president must address the anger in the land by simply fixing the optics. He has to collapse his ministries. He must. He has to do a national address and, and tell Nigeria that I see the impact. I did not realize it was going to be this bad. I am sorry. As an immediate measure, we are reducing the number of ministries we have from 48 to 32 or to 25. You see, if the, if the president doesn't do something as fundamental as this, the anger is going to escalate and it may go out of control. Already there are whispers, and it's no longer whispers. Even former DSS directors are talking about coups, about the possibility of coups. This thing is not a joke. Mm -hmm. This our president and his advisors and the politicians that are running this country today must understand that this African fight, the, the best way to destroy a country is to leave its people in poverty and penury. He, they will ask for the devil to replace the people that they hold responsible for their poverty and failure. And that's where we are heading to. So really, for me, solution, fix the optics. The optics is very important now. Forget the economics. Just fix the optics. Let Nigerians know that they are not alone in the suffering. But I'm afraid, okay. I'm afraid because um, 
the president, permit me to say, uh, addresses us with some kind of arrogance, even from the time of uh, electioneering the campaign still now. And uh, he, like you said, he's not in tune with the sufferings of the people. He said that the suffering we are seeing now is baby steps. And <laughs> I don't know what he meant. But, Blood steps but, are going to come soon. Yeah, so it, it means that uh, we are going to be even mature in the suffering and all that. And, and it doesn't speak well. He's, he went to Qatar, told the people that uh, his government is so good that you report people that take bribe to him and all those things. And people have faulted some statements and all that. I don't know how this is going to happen that we will change. He said that his ministries are so many because if they, he doesn't do that, uh, the job may not be done. And then on the other hand, he's talking about implementing a report that is more than a decade long or, or old. The yeah. uh, uh, Those are questions uh, I was going to yes. ask. Now. So I don't know how, how you think this government is going to to be biting from the two corners of their mouths and still do what you're proposing that they're going to do. Maybe... Well, but they, they, I don't they know. have to. They have to. Yeah, no, I mean, the Who will make them? Simple. No, they, they, they have to. It, look, I, and I think that who will make them, the answer to that is you and I. People need to begin to let them know how bad things are. We are in touch with the people. I have, you know, people working for me in my house and in my business. I live in an estate, I relate with the security men, you know, um, I relate with, you know, my artisans, my organizer. You, you can sense the anger and the frustration. But whatever you do, even as CS, uh, CSOs, you are, even as labor or anything, it is interpreted as um, politics. Whatever you say, even this looting yes, and all I that, agree. people want, Absolutely. and they say it's politics. Absolutely. And that, that's unfortunate, you know, listening to the president when he came to Lagos to launch the fantastic project that Lagos State Government just finished, the red line, you know, and the president had to spoil, in my opinion, the, the mood, and, you know, that was a good event. It was a very, very rare bright light in, 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 a, in overwhelming darkness. And then the president had to come there and issue a threat and an ultimatum to labor, mm. you know, politicizing the protest. That is unfortunate. But the point is that right now, I think what Nigerians need to be doing, civil society organizations like mine, um, um, labor movements, the media, um, influencers on social media, um, uh, public opinion uh, molders, we must speak with one voice and let the president understand that we are in an existential crisis. It will consume everybody, including himself if he does not fix especially the optics. You see this optics, and eh? sometimes it's, it, you, you, can, you can be shaving the head of a man and blowing wind on it, and the man will be happy, will be content, even though you are doing him harm. You cannot be speaking with arrogance and bravado when you are also punishing and, 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 um, and putting into hardship people. They will get angry. They, and a hungry man is already an angry man. Imagine a hungry man that also has reason outside of his hunger to be angry. That's explosive anger, and that's what you saw happen in Abuja yesterday. And that is just the beginning. If you like, put 10 million security guards. The Minister of State for Agriculture came out and made extremely unfortunate statements, very unfortunate statements, clearly insensitive of the situation, clearly misreading what was going on. Calling those guys criminals. They were not criminals. They were ordinary Nigerians expressing their hunger and their anger. Do I support what they did? No. But it was inevitable. So the president must be made to see that we have a problem on our hands. And I'm telling you, I think it's high time we start letting them know that there are whispers in the land. There are whispers about change of government by any means necessary. There are whispers. And the people that are pushing those whispers are not you and I. There are people that are connected in the security services. They are coming out boldly in the press to say that, don't say that who is not possible. So look, the president must understand that he is raising specters. He's driving Nigeria to the end, to, to, to the point. Imagine, God forbid, that we have a coup in this country. Imagine what that would mean. It means that 25 years of whatever gains, minor as they may be, democratically that we have made, is gone. We start all over. 
Why are those people so? I don't understand. Look, somebody needs to get across to the president and get them to understand that mm -hmm. we have problems with this. This is a serious situation that they have to take seriously and take immediate remedial action. There are a lot of things that can also be done, you know, to fix the price of goods and services, bring prices down to a certain degree. You can never go back, unfortunately, to where we were in June or in May 2023. I don't think we can ever get there in terms of price of goods and services. You know, because inflation, once it hits, it rarely comes down. The prices cannot come down. That much, but we can at least stem the tide, prevent it from going higher, maybe bring it down a bit by some very smart policy making. It's time to do all of that, but above all of that, the president must show sensitivity to the plight of Nigerians. He has to stop this arrogant, posturing, braggadocious, and um, um, boastful um, statements that mm. are obviously very insensitive and sounds even almost wicked. Uh, you know, the time for missing words, I think for me, that time is gone. We're in a situation where even, you know, people like you and I on this show, we're, we're, we're in danger. So we, we should cry out and we should speak out. Okay, so talking about remedial actions, um, two things you touched on was collapsing the ministries and the fuel subsidy. Now, obviously, there was the Orosanya report that was said um, the president wants, would like to be implemented and um, other people coming out to say, okay, we need to review this before we even implement it. But on the other hand, Femi Falano came out yesterday, um, it was in yesterday's news, talking about the review of fuel subsidy. So do you think if we combine both of them, um, the collapsing of the ministries, because that kind of like reduces the cost of governance, and then even the review of the fuel subsidy might not be back to um, where it used to be, because even as of right now, there's still a quasi um, subsidy whereby look at the dollar, you know, keeps increasing or rising, and then we're still paying the same amount. So if we were supposed to pay the same thing as the dollar, obvious, obviously, um, whatever we're paying for fuel now would have been about a thousand naira something um, in that range. So do you think um, both of these um, two things I've touched on would actually help with, you know, the prices of goods and services in the country at the moment? Well, yeah, absolutely. Um... The, the, the cost of governance issue for me is more of an optics issue. Uh, it will fix the anger to a certain degree. If Nigerians see very sincere, spirited efforts to cut the cost of governance, their anger will, you know, their levels will come down a bit. They, they will, you know, they will pull them, as we say, in, um, in the street palace. Um, if that, you know, may not really fix the problem, the fundamental problems of Nigeria, I don't know how much, how many ministries do you want to remove, how many uh, per total of emergencies, do you want to, to, to collapse into each other? How many jobs will you eliminate? And how much will that result into in terms of the Naira and power that is saved? How many billions, trillions can you save? I'm not sure that this government, given its body language, has the will to actually tackle that issue head on. If you really, really want to make impact in terms of cost savings in that direction, it has to be a very extreme surgical operation. I, I know they won't do it. So for me, mm -hmm. just talking about our Orosanye report, um, the reducing ministries, is really about fixing the emotions in the country, showing that you are also making sacrifices and making changes. Um, the other part of it, you know, what Ben Palano said is very instructive. I just did a quick calculation. Um, if we were to pay the current flat rate for PMS on the international market at our current exchange rate in Nigeria, petrol will sell for 2,112 naira at the pump. Mm. As based on today's exchange rate, to sell at 2,112 naira. We know without a doubt that we're importing petrol. We know it. Because not only say look at Dangote refinery has started, oh we celebrated pump and pageantry. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the the political uh, media propaganda machinery rolled out in January and said Dangote Refinery has received so and so million uh, barrels of food. They're about to start. Well, this is March. <laughs> oh, we still haven't started. <laughs> um, the oh, the um, um, turnaround maintenance has been completed. I think they call it the engineering something. You know, they, they use the technical term. They have been completed. Production will start soon. This is March. That was in December. This is March. Nothing. Right. So we know that we import petrol till today. 
if we're importing petrol, it means that we're importing petrol at one naira, sorry, one dollar thirty-two cents. That's the current international price. It moves, it varies, but rarely by more than a few cents. So around one naira, one dollar thirty-two cents. Convert that at one thousand six hundred, or let's not say one thousand five hundred, because official rate is about one thousand five fifty as of yesterday. Mm. Convert that, you get two thousand naira straight. So clearly, since we know we're importing this thing. A subsidy is being paid somehow, somewhere, by some. A subsidy is being paid. So what Ben Pollard was saying is, admit it, you know, come out and tell Nigerians we are still paying subsidies. So that again, what that will do is that it will boost the confidence of the people, you know, in the government. It will boost the faith of the people. People will know that these people at least are not lying to us. You know, it's it's, it's very bad for you to be beating somebody and they're lying to them that you're not beating them. Okay, so we are paying subsidies. Let them, in fact, this can be something that they can use as a political, you know, they're looking, always looking for political points to make it. To say, look, yes, we said subsidy was gone, but the truth is that it's not gone. We couldn't take all of it out. It, it, would, have, it would have been too damaging. So we are still paying subsidies. Let the president admit it. I don't know, is it World Bank is afraid of or is it time, but they must pay his salary. I don't even understand it anymore. Because obviously this is his test on saying that we're still pursuing this um, neoliberal economic ideology is just simply to pander to the World Bank element. Imagine the CBN only coming out to say that they are working with the IMF on policies that will help stabilize the Naira. You know, it's so ridiculous. The central bank of a country, how can you be working with the IMF? The IMF is a multilateral lending agency whose interests are not, not capital NOT underlying bold italics. They are not pursuing the interests of developing countries. They are pursuing the interests of people that set them up and that call the shots there. So how can our CBN be telling Nigeria that they are working with the IMF? Absolutely ridiculous. So the president needs to come out and admit that we're paying subsidies. That will help again with the optics. I've always then, been... Okay. Yeah, so let me quickly run from yes. On the issue of the exchange rate, I think the area, and I've repeatedly said this, the area that the most impact, the most good can be done today, is in the exchange rate management. If we're able to somehow, you know, persuade, manage, um, uh, you know, uh, massage our exchange rates back down to under 1,000 naira, let's just say 950, you will see the how the temperature will come down in the country because it will have an impact on prices. We import a lot of things, almost everything that we eat and wear and use are imported. So if we're able to manage that, the CBN can do this. It will just take some bold very hard decisions, but they can do it. They need to intervene in the market at market prices. Mm -hmm. They do not, if they intervene in the market the way they did last week, um, using a specialized exchange rate, they have gone back to MFLA days, and then you, be, you know, it's beginning to look hypocritical. So they need to intervene in the market. It's a desperate need now. They need to provide supply for at least two months to drive these prices down. While their policies to bring in foreign uh, portfolio investors, foreign direct investment, uh, harness the um, diaspora remittances, while all of that is going on, and while all of that yields fruit, they must intervene to bring the exchange rate back down to below 1,000 naira. If we do that, then you will see that things will, will ease off a bit in the market. Yeah, um, like I said, um, I wanted to say, uh, I was always uh, asking myself why they were hiding the fact that subsidy was being paid when it was a, a point to their advantage, and mm -hmm. you uh, expressed the same. But I'm just wondering, um, in the news also we find that CBN has slashed customs FX duty rate. I don't know, will that help, or is that just uh, playing to the gallery? It will help, but um, it's not enough. It will only help, but it will be marginal. What we, you know, I mean, look, so the way to simply look at this is what percentage of landing cost of any article that you talk about is, is uh, accounted for by, by duties. What percentage? Duties typically 10%, you know, for some items 5%, for some items 20%, and those are usually items that are considered almost luxury and non essential. And then some luxury goods you talk of 50 to 60%. So it will affect those ones. You know significantly, but you know the irony of that is that the things that will probably bear uh, that enjoy the benefits of this reversal the most will be things that we don't need anyway. But for the things that we need, the percentage of their landing costs represented by due, by import duties is small, is not significant enough. So 
uh, you know, so the hue and cry over them adjusting the rate of words, and I didn't really follow it because, well, yeah, it's bad. It's, it's again, just for the optics, and yeah, there's, there's some cost implication to that. But it's not significant enough. We need significant fundamental actions from the CBN. Just reviewing the rate for duty uh, computation back down to, I don't know what rate they've gone to now. I don't think that will do it. Um, it, it it's good that they've done something. But we need a whole lot more. Something far more fundamental has to happen. We need to drive our exchange rate down. Yeah, we need to drive our exchange rate down to below 1,000. That is the solution and it is the only solution. Mm. Okay, I don't know. So, uh, well, uh, <laughs> maybe sometimes they have to just uh, put their tail under their, 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 their legs <laughs> and then go back yes. to the, the policies that, that, that way were before now and admit that they are wrong. Kenya did it. I think Kenya also. They did this fuel subsidy removal and after a while they said, oh no, we find out that w people are suffering more and they reverted to the old thing. Why can't we do that? Are we too proud to do it or something? Anyway, this is where we'll have to draw the curtain with you this morning. We'd like to thank you for your time, Mr. Thank Shokoton, you so for coming much. on the program this morning. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Mm. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Mr. Shegun Shokoton, and we were looking at the fact that the federal government has said they are going to uh, distribute um, grains again to the people. And again. Again. In high pitch. <laughs> <laughs> again, yeah. That's 762 bags or so yeah. to 200 and something million Nigerians. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's see how that goes. Yeah. Anyway. Fingers crossed. I yeah. hope it gets to your doorstep. <laughs> and I hope it gets to mine as well. <laughs> I don't hope it gets to my doorstep. It might be contaminated. Or bad. Yeah, <laughs> just bad. Anyway, this is where we draw the curtain. I'd just like to um, give you some motivational uh, talk this morning. Sometimes you feel that at the, you are at the end of your life, that nothing else can work for you. There are some people who made billions at the early age of 20s, like the Mark Zuckerberg of this world. He, made, he became a billionaire in dollars at the age of 23. But we have people like Tiger Woods that got to 45. We have people like uh, George Lucas that got to 52 before they became billionaires. Maybe the target you are hoping to have today, uh, you think that you are at the evening or in the evening of your life, don't give up mm -hmm. because tomorrow might just be that bright light that you need. I'd like to thank you for being a part of our program. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rome Paulson. Thank you for having breakfast with us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good day.